I'm Denise Baden, I'm Professor of Sustainable Business at the University of Southampton. I'm Phil Smallman, I'm Head of Geography at Bitten Park School. Denise contacted me about the session to get together a group of students in order to write a climate change inspired story. Sometimes it can be a little bit frustrating because you have all these sustainable solutions in your mind and whoever reads academic articles, very few people and, and only those who are already interested. So I was very much looking for a way to reach a wider audience with green solutions. I think it's really important to focus on solutions when we look at climate change. I think it's really easy for students to feel highly anxious about the problems that we're facing. Most of our young people think humanity is doomed. So I wanted to show sort of some positive visions to help balance that so we know what we're aiming towards. I seized on the idea of setting up a series of sort of free green stories writing competitions and the idea is to write engaging stories that would reach a mainstream, not just aimed at greenies, but they sort of either showcase positive visions of what a society, a green sustainable society might look like. I think putting solutions into green stories is a really good idea. I think it's a really clever way of nudging people into making little changes that can do things to help reduce climate change and I think it's a really creative thing to do as well and helps to challenge students particularly those that are very good at creative writing uh, and it can give them the opportunity to develop certain skills and, and, and send a message to lots of people. So I set up the website and there's all kinds of different solutions there for them to educate themselves really and ideas of how they might go in stories and then it's just up to their imaginations. So we have a Green Stories Novel Prize uh, sponsored by Orna Ross, £1,500 worth of prizes for that and a deadline in December and that's running every year. We have short story competitions coming up in February and March. Uh, the March one is for under 18s. It's really brilliant to see the stories that the students came up with, the different approaches that they took. We had love stories, we had sci-fi ideas. I was delighted by how well the session went today. The students were really engaged, you know, and we set them a number of different tasks. And it was really interesting to see how the students could allow their imagination to run wild whilst also still coming up with really effective green solutions um, for our planet. And the idea is that we can now turn these entries, winning entries, into actual books and get out there and reach a much broader group of people with these green solutions. I wrote my own novel, Habitat Man, as a way to sort of smuggle in green solutions into a mainstream sort of rom-com based on the real-life green garden consultancy in Southampton. So I'm delighted that's now been published. So we've got quite a lot going on on the Green Stories projects. It's really important to have academics from universities come in and visit schools because I think it really helps students to have high quality subject knowledge input and also helps them to aspire to achieving academic greatness as well. But unless you tie that alarm into actual feeling of I can make a difference, it's just going to lead to eco-anxiety, and a lot of sort of, or avoidance. I think you can get sort of alarm fatigue after a while. So I wanted to take them from that position of being anxious, but feeling like there's not much they can do, to actually thinking, I know what a green society might look like and I can help us get us there. I hope so much to better see some of these coming in as green stories entries. And it seemed like they got a lot out of it by the level of chatter and excitement. Their imaginations were going ding, ding, ding and it, it was a, a really nice session. So I'm very grateful to Bitten Park School for inviting me in and to, to be able to do this session.